Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of my wedding planning series. Today I am excited to be with one of Ghana's most sought after event professionals. He has a vibe that he brings to every event that is unmatched. Kabute Okanse is with me today and we are talking about a few things. So this interview is going to be in two parts. We'll be talking about how to get the best out of your wedding MC, how to choose the best wedding MC, and what should you expect to pay for a good wedding MC. Stay tuned. Kabute Okanse. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Your vibe is something else. Thank you. I am really interested. How did you stumble into event emceeing? I know that you don't just do weddings, right? You do That's corporate right. events, social That's events, right. and special events even. That's right. How did you stumble into all of this? Well, in all honesty, now looking back, I honestly believe that my whole life prepared me for this. I, w I never ever at a point in my development thought this would be something I'll be doing full time. Um, the reason why I say my whole life because I've always been the extracurricular kind of person. So primary JSS, I was doing cultural dancing, poetry, you know, went into SS, I joined the choir, went to the university, I got introduced into theatre, you know, so I've always been, you know, in front of audiences, I've always enjoyed applause, you know, and when you're a child, you know, um, and you're the one who's not shy. So when there's Children's Day, come and say opening prayer, come and give vote of thanks. You know, those little, little things. They made me comfortable in front of an audience. But then I guess the, the journey towards becoming a professional or commercializing started sometime after secondary school. You know, when there were family parties within my family, both the extended family and the nuclear family. You know, they would always ask me to come and dance. I used to dance really well. You know, even now, you know, I've, I've really got my groove, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so I'd be called to do little parts, you know, performances and things like that. And then, you know, friends of my parents, family, it started getting wider, you know. And then eventually my own colleagues after university especially started having you know, events, uh, weddings, and things like that. And at that time, there wasn't anything like a professional. So you look around you and find who you think can do it. And then I'd go and do it. So it was really, you know, just fun moments. But the defining moment was sometime in 2011, when I actually attended two weddings back to back, you know, with the family, two um, consecutive Saturdays. And I say these were both weddings I call money no be problem weddings, you know, like literally lights in the trees, you know, like everything on point. Unfortunately, the MCs on both occasions left a lot to be desired. And I remember sitting there and looking at the couple and I could feel them cringe, you know, and, I, and two things went through my mind. One, being your wedding day once in a lifetime, at least you deserve better than this. And then my second thought was, hmm, if it's really just this guy alone, I'm sure I can do much better than this, you know? Mm -hmm. So I remember I stayed with my mind the whole week and at the time I was into consulting, you know, I'm, I'm a biochemist by training, by the way. So I was doing that all through the week, it kept being on my mind. Friday I went to work just by some surge. I went on Facebook, created a page, Kabute My MC. And that was around 7 a.m. I closed it, went to work, got back after lunch around 1 p.m. Out of curiosity, went to check the page and bam, I had my first inquiry. My wow. first inquiry. That's literally, and, like, that's less than 24 yeah, hours. Yeah, oh, that's minutes. less from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. Wow. So that's like five hours or so. Yes. And that's when you knew. And, and that's when I knew <laughs> that, you know, this was a value because I honestly didn't even, I created it just out of, you know, I didn't even have any idea of, a commercial figure, a rate or anything. You know, I hadn't even structured anything in my mind. But once I got that call, I remember even asking that particular client, what makes you believe that I can even do what I'm doing? I say I do it. She says, well, there are too many people with too many scars for having a cousin, an uncle, a neighbor who's supposed to be funny hosting their events. And it doesn't really go well, you know? So they didn't want that. They wanted somebody who says, this is what I do. And so out of frustration, she also went on Facebook and typed MCs in Ghana. Okay. And my page popped up, you know. So that was it. So after that call, and I got the date, this was around late February, but the event was 30th April 2011. Wow. 
So between February and April, in April, I then now had to sit back and now get into my head and plan the event so that I can go and deliver. Because now it wasn't fun anymore. Now there was something at stake. I was taking somebody's money, their whole family and their whole, everything was at stake for them. And I didn't want to be that guy who got me to start. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yes, that's, that's how the journey started. Okay. So that leads me into my next question. What are we looking at? Because when somebody books you for their wedding, they have very high expectations. They want to have a blast. They want the event to be memorable. What should we look out for when we are choosing an MC? What makes the MC the right MC for the wedding? Okay, so I like to put that in this way that everybody wants their event to be a once in a lifetime, but never to be forgotten experience. Absolutely. They want every time they cast their minds back to the day, they want it to bring back some really great memories for them. So what do you look out for? I'll say honestly, first of all, that look for a professional. Look for a professional MC because by virtue, even if they are a mediocre professional, even if they are, it cuts away a chunk of the could go wrongs just by virtue of the fact that the person has put their mind within the frame of a professional. Because once you're going for a professional, the reason why that's important is because one, the individual has something at stake in your event. It's no longer for granted that, oh, because he's my friend, because he's my cousin, he has a stake. In this case, they actually have a stake in it. They have taken, they're taking some money from you. They have a brand and a name to protect. They are thinking about the next clients that who would approach them, possibly through your event as well. And so they will put in the work that it takes to be able to deliver on the day. All right, that's the basic difference between getting a professional and getting an ordinary person to do your event for you. So get a professional so that at least you can take for granted that this is somebody who's coming prepared. This is something, somebody who's coming understanding all the elements that come together to make the event amazing. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, within the scope of all the professionals that are available, find a professional that you can build a personal connection with. I think it is so important because I think every audience, it may not be conscious, but every audience can tell when the connection between the MC and the event host is real or it's fake and they feed off that connection. Because remember, the hosts and the audience already have a natural connection. That's why they, are, they were invited in the first place. Yep. There's already a natural connection between them. You, as the MC, is the one who is now going to cultivate that. And again, if you have a professional, that professional understands that even though I have probably just an hour of interaction with the couple or with the, with the event host before the event, I need to find a way within that one hour to build a connection that can represent a lifetime experience with them. Do you understand me? Because it is so, it is so important. The way they respond to you, a lot of it hinges on how they feel about you. So if you're going for a professional, Look through the scope of professionals available and ask yourself, which of these can I really work with? Which of these will I enjoy them as a person, as a human being? How do you achieve that? By speaking to them, by, by meeting yes. them in person? Yes, yes. So first of all, from afar, of course, now because of different platforms, you can have access to their body of work, you know, through social media or if they have a website or interacting with other people. At least that gives you a short list. Then within that short list, put a call through to them. You know, just the vibe you will get, you know, the kind of conversation you will get will let you know. We're human beings. You can always tell, yeah. you know, that, oh, this one, I think we can have a good. If an MC can get you to feel good about yourself, even just on a phone call, then you can imagine how you will feel in their presence. And yeah. then you can transfer that to your event. You understand? So if they pick up a, a phone call and they know from you and they know you are a client, and they can have a five minutes conversation with you on the phone and you 
end the call and you don't feel like you just had a conversation that should tell you something about the personality that you're going to deal with because the thing about emceeing is that you cannot it's very difficult to separate the personality of the person from their service yeah. do you understand yeah. so it, it, it's embedded it's almost you know equally immersed into each other and that's the reason why in evaluating them you need to evaluate their personality in addition there are few MCs who can switch you know who can be very prim proper and also be a full-on party person so if they pick the phone the phone to speak to you depending on what they hear on the other side they then decide which of the personalities to pick up to to to, to meet that objective for you so that's the second thing i think um, is important so then you've picked a professional mm -hmm. two you've picked a professional that you can build a personal connection with mm -hmm. once you have done that i think that finally you should trust the choice you make if you pick a professional that you can build a personal connection with i think that all you have left is to give them the best brief possible that you can have give them all the details, give them as much insight into your personality, give them as much insight into your preferences. And once you've done all of that, trust them as a professional to take all of that information and to put it together in a way that then delivers the event for you. Excellent. So number one, make sure that you pick a professional. Pick a professional. Um, how do you establish that they are professional though? I mean, now anybody can, can get on Instagram <laughs> and, and say, I, I am, am a pro MC. I can I, easily I, say that Instagram I understand. I understand. and say I'm a pro. But I know I'm not a pro MC. I, Even I, though I could do it, mm, I probably won't give a cup of tea vibe. Mm, well, I understand that. But when somebody even has the confidence to even say, I am a professional, they at least have a certain mindset that's where it's required to deliver the event. That's why I said, one, find a professional. So they say they are professional. Okay, good. Now, within these 500 options of people who say they are professionals, within them, which of these do I think I can build a connection with? At this point, of course, I've visited their pages. I've looked at, you know, little clips of what they've done. Maybe I've spoken to other people about who have seen them in action. Then it gives me a, a kind of a short list. And then I now move next to the personal connection by having a direct conversation and interaction with them that will then narrow it down to maybe two for you and then you can now meet those two one-on-one -on -one and feel you know the vibe because if you call me as a client we talk on the phone we agree to have an appointment when i come to have that appointment with you there are a lot of things i'm achieving with that appointment it may be just 20 minutes appointment with you first of all I want to assure you that you did not make a mistake by asking, by choosing me, by inviting me to meet with you. Secondly, I'm also proving to you that I actually do know what I want. Well, I mean, I do know what I'm about. That you will arrive at that conclusion, not by me telling you, but by the kind of questions I'll ask you, the kind of conversations I'll have with you, the kind of input I will make into the suggestions that you bring on board, the kind of options that I would give to you. Do you understand? And ultimately, beyond all the fine details of what will happen, when it will happen, how it will happen, it's also making you comfortable with me at a human level. Because at the bottom line of the MC's work is to give the audience a human experience. The reason why a human experience is important is because, especially for social events, there is such a wide range of people who constitute the guests. So if you want to take any one specific criteria to be what you hinge on to deliver, you would still cut off a lot of people who don't fall within that criteria. The only common thread, especially for a social event for your guests, is that they're all human beings. Because if you look at age, it's such a wide variety. If you look at status, it's a wide variety. If you look at, you know, cultural backgrounds, it's a wide variety. It's different if it's a corporate event. If I'm going to host an event for bankers, I know that is the common denominator. These are professionals, these are bankers, these are finance people. So it gives me a fine scope within which to build. If I'm going to, let's say, host an event for 
secondary school students. That's a fine category I can put them in. You know, if I'm going to host an event, uh, um, a, a harvest in a church, the common denominator is that we are all members of this church. It's a religious environment. But when you're going to a wedding, you can't, there's too many layers. So aim for a human experience. You know, a human experience not at the lower level, but at the higher level. Because I say that when you ever, whenever you meet an audience that is mixed, play to the highest common denominator, not to the lowest common denominator. You know, play to the highest common denominator because the lowest denominator in that audience pool is looking at the highest denominator and they decide how they feel or they react based on that highest oh, denominator. Yeah. And of course, if you're a professional and you're looking for the next event, it will likely come from the highest denominator than from the lowest denominator. You see what I mean? <laughs> that makes yes. a lot of sense. Absolutely, <laughs> I would do the same. But I think that the points that mm. you have established here are important for choosing any vendor, really. That's right. Number yeah, one, right. make sure they are professional. Mm. Number two, make sure that you have some kind of a rapport mm. or have some human connection on a personal level with this pro. And number three, when you have decided who you want to work with, please trust, trust the professional to do the right thing for you. Because a lot of the times we get too anxious about whether or not, yep. you're not they're going to perform. <laughs> mm, maybe I should call them and give them some tips. Uh, no, just allow them, give them the creative freedom to do the best that they possibly can for you. And I can assure you, a lot of the times when you give a creative professional the creative freedom, they usually deliver their Absolutely. best because they want to establish that the trust that you have put in them is justified. Yep. Okay, so before we end this today's conversation, mm. what I want to find out from Kabute mm. is how much, if anybody is <laughs> watching this right now and they're considering hiring a professional MC, yep. how much should they expect to pay <laughs> a professional MC to okay. MC a wedding for, let's say, on average eight hours? In other environments, professionals have the luxury of charging, let's say, on an hourly basis, okay? In that case, sometimes it makes it a bit much easier because it gives you a certain framework, you know? Unfortunately, in our environment, that doesn't always work well because I always ask people, okay, so assuming that I charge you by the half and you pay for four hours and there's a delay at some point, and by the time you are cutting the cake, your four hours is up. Do I come whisper into your ears that, by the way, your four hours is up, you know, so top up. Or I pick up my, my microphone and I walk out of <laughs> the environment. So, so no, I don't do that. So obviously, as with every kind of work, there are different levels of professionals based on their experience, based on their profile, you know, all of that, based on how much they have invested into themselves in at the point that you are engaging their service so there's a wide range i would say that on you can have at the moment reasonably anywhere between three hundred dollars to three thousand dollars okay i'm using dollars just because it's a common, common denominator but if you're in ghana then that means about a thousand five hundred cities up to you know about fifteen thousand you know ghana cities but on an average on an average if you're doing depending on who you are and who you are targeting to, I would say a good decent fair range is maybe about a thousand dollars, you know. So depending on who you are engaging, you would get plus or minus on either side. But if you want a full range, $300 to $3,000. I mean, believe me, there are MCs out there in the world who, who really earn their worth, you know, and who have paid some really good money. And I said, look, listen, if you are an event host, I tell you, the value of getting a professional comes to the fore when something happens. But unfortunately, if you wait for that something to happen, that something to go wrong, at that point, it will be too late to get a professional to correct it for you. Yeah. So the value of paying your, getting a professional and paying them a good price is actually in your own interest because they ensure that all that can go wrong does not end up going wrong. And even when it does, they then fall on their experience, they fall on their profile, they fall on the work they have done in preparing for the event 
to make it work without you even realizing that it's working. You know, if you're taking any regular ordinary person, trust me, and imagine that you're doing an outdoor event and it starts raining, trust me, they will run with your guests. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they may even be the one to take off first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. You know, but everything that can go wrong, sometimes that's go wrong. Okay. But when you have the right people in the right place who know that they are being paid a fair wage, like I said, they have a stake in the event. It is beyond just what you're paying them, it's actually how well they execute your event so that at the end of the day, it even evolves from just a professional relationship to a mutually respecting you know, personal relationship. So if you ask me, that's the wide range. Within that, you can find a, 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 whole, uh, you know, a whole scope of people to be able to work with. Um, if you want to work with me, I mean, let's work. I endorse him, actually. <laughs> I endorse Kabuto Let's Kante. work. He you know. is, I mean, you are amazing. You can work with any audience. I have seen you work with mm. so many, like, different demographics, yeah. people from different parts of the world, people with totally different personalities, and have yeah. been able to build, you know, an event to the height where it is unforgettable. Yeah. So, yes, absolutely. If you're looking to hire an MC, I endorse Kabute <laughs> Okanse. I'll say that on video today. I fully endorse him. He's oh, thank worth you. it. He's worth every Pessoa in your city. Absolutely. Thank you. And for me, I think that one of the most important things when I meet, you know, brides or when I meet our clients, and they ask me, okay, this is my budget, where can I squeeze? I always say top on the list for me in terms of priority should be entertainment. You can have the best decor in the world, you can have the best props in the world, but if you don't have the right entertainment, if you don't have a party, I feel like the event, next week we've forgotten about your event, you know? But you can have the most minimalist yeah. setup but yeah. the right entertainment. Entertainment yeah. meaning MC, DJ, DJ, live performances, even before food and, and drinks, for me, wow. is top on the list. So I'm glad I'm not yeah. the one saying it. <laughs> <laughs> no, truly, from a professional point viewpoint, yeah. I will say entertainment, don't compromise mm. on a great MC. They can make or break your Oh, event. absolutely. So this conversation is going to be in two parts. We have talked at length about, you know, how to get the best out of your MC, how to choose the best MC. Next week, we are going to have a deeper conversation about how to actually get the best from your wedding MC. And if you're watching this and have been invited by your friend to MC their wedding, next week, you don't want to miss that conversation because we're going to give you some top tips on how to make sure that that experience is unforgettable for your host and for all of the guests. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and also remember to hit that bell so that you receive a notification whenever there's a new video. I look forward to seeing you again, same time next week. Bye-bye.